So as part of our ongoing look at some of the history connected with Sacred Trinity, uh, we're here today, we're going to have a look at a couple of our plaques in church. Um, here you see a plaque to uh, two Drinkwaters, Colonel John Drinkwater Bethune and John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune. And uh, over on this side, you see um, Thomas Drinkwater, Major Thomas Drinkwater, Major Tom, and um, his parents, uh, John Drinkwater and Elizabeth Andrews, who are buried in the church. So they're buried somewhere on the floor of the church, under the floor. Um, and these uh, drink waters, so um, the drink water Bethunes, uh, John Drinkwater Bethune is the eldest son of John Drinkwater and Elizabeth Andrews. And uh, he's the brother of Thomas Drinkwater. Uh, the Drinkwater Bethunes weren't buried anywhere here. Uh, they uh, lived it well. Colonel John Drinkwater Bethune uh, lived in Surrey, uh, and John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune uh, lived in in India, moved to India, and died in India. Major Drinkwater was the second son of. Well, apparently that abbreviation, J-N-O, is probably short for John, which seems bizarre, but that's the information I've managed to glean. John Drinkwater, M.D., and Elizabeth Andrews, his wife. So they're buried here, um, and they are the parents of Major Drinkwater. So Major Drinkwater, ironically... Uh, drowned at sea and uh, on his plaque here, died in 1797, aged only 32 years, on his return from the West Indies. Now uh, that uh, poem on his plaque, uh, I'll read it out for you, thrice had his foot Domingo's island pressed, midst horrid war and fierce barbarian wiles, Thrice had his blood repelled the yellow pest that stalks gigantic through the Western Isles, returning to his native shores again in hopes to embrace a father, brother, friends. Alas, the faithful rattling snaps in twain, he falls into a watery grave, descends. So sadly, he died on his way back from uh, Domingo's Island, uh, Saint-Domingue, uh, which was a French colony, uh, and uh, is modern-day Haiti, uh, apparently. Uh, so, in 1791, uh, during, uh, th th this was at the time of the French Revolution, and uh, this island was a, a prosperous French colony, uh, probably the... Um, probably the wealthiest colony. Some people claim it was the wealthiest colony in the world at that time. Um, and it was convulsed by a slave revolt. So, of course, a lot of the wealth on there was uh, built on the back of African slaves. And there were half a million mainly African slaves uh, on that island. And they rebelled against the uh, 30,000 uh, white people who were on the island, who were um, both rich and poor, but, uh, uh, but they rebelled against the, uh, the white um, oppressors, I suppose. And, of course, uh, the British uh, saw this as an opportunity... Uh, for them to seize a potentially um, uh, quite um, profitable uh, colony. Um, and they also saw lots of dangers in a slave revolt because they didn't want uh, slaves in British colonies getting any ideas. Uh, so they sent 
troops there to quell the uh, revolt and to um, take control of the island. Unfortunately, it did not go well. It did not go well at all. Um, so uh, a, the reference in there to the yellow pest is to yellow fever. And most of the, uh, it, it's reckoned that two thirds, um, at least three in every five of the British troops who were sent there died there and they died primarily of disease. So it's yellow fever took out most of them. Um, I mean, obviously some of them died in conflict, uh, but they were mainly just staying behind fortifications. Um, when they did venture out, they were, they were usually ambushed uh, by the, the opposing forces. But uh, they didn't venture out too much, apparently. A lot of the, I mean, the, the, the losses on the other side, who were much less well armed, were significant. But the British forces mainly lost troops uh, through disease. It was a terrible, ill-judged campaign. And apparently at that time as well, the British forces were were finding it hard to recruit people. Not surprisingly, when news came back that um, uh, that so many people were dying. So thousands of British troops were sent over there and thousands died. And uh, by 1798, it was clear that they were not going to suppress the island. And... Uh, Toussaint Louverture, uh, the leader of the um, opposing forces, was uh, making advances and by September 1798 the surviving British troops were evacuated. But our man here, Thomas, uh, was on his way home in 1797, having survived uh, the horrible conditions there. Um, but sadly, died at sea of some tragedy on his way home. So over on the other side we have these plaques. Now John Drinkwater Bethune, I don't know why wh where the name Bethune comes from, um, but he is the other son of John and Elizabeth. So he's the brother of Major Thomas Drinkwater um, is Colonel John Drinkwater um, and he uh, served in the army and in particular um, is particularly noted as taking part in the defence of Gibraltar and became a historian of that siege. He wrote, the, wrote, um, uh, wrote about the siege and those, uh, that account is um, a significant historic record. Um, and then we've got below him John Elliot Drinkwater Bethune, the eldest son of John Drinkwater Bethune. Um, and he became a lawyer, a barrister at law. And interestingly, he went off to India. So he's uh, buried in India, in Calcutta. And um, one of the things about him that's quite interesting is that he served um, in the sort of British uh, rule of India, I guess, um, in his legal capacity. But he also founded a college and um, supported by various other people, um, the Calcutta Female School. And it was apparently the, the first school for women uh, or girls in in that area. Um, some claim that it was the uh, first such college in Asia. Not sure about that, but um, he certainly had a desire to promote education and to promote education amongst those who might have less access to it because um, they were native Indian 
Uh, they weren't, you know, in those days, obviously, India was had a tremendous uh, civilization, um, which the British, um, well, let's not go into too much detail, but the British uh, ruled India at that time that John Elliot Drinkwater was there. Um, and the Indian population weren't always treated with great respect, but he did found this school. Um, and I think we ought to, yeah, respect him for that. So there's a little bit about the drink waters. If anyone knows any more information about the drink waters, I mean, I'm intrigued, for instance, as to whether they're connected at all with Drinkwater Park, which is just up the road. I think probably not, but I'd love to hear if anyone knows any more information about the drink waters.